So I come from a very humble background. Um, I'm an only child of migrant farm workers. Uh, we came to Michigan for the first time in 1979. I was very young, but I have very vivid memories of the huge amounts of snow and the very um, basic room that we lived in um, made of cinder blocks with no drywall on it on the north side of Holland, um, right off of New Holland Street where Makatawa um, Legends now um, sits. And my parents would work on average about 60 hours plus a week, usually Monday through Saturday, 10 to 12 hours a week. Um, when I started kindergarten, my parents stopped migrating because my father, who has a second grade education, my mother fourth grade, um, decided that the best thing they could offer their only child was a, an opportunity for a good education. And they didn't want to keep um, living the migrant lifestyle, moving from place to place, where I would have to keep shifting schools in the middle of the school year. Um, I started kindergarten in Texas, South Texas, and we stayed there for um, two or three years. My parents were struggling financially. My mother didn't know how to drive. Um, so my dad was the sole breadwinner on minimum wage in South Texas. My uncles, who continue to be migrants here in Holland, Michigan, still working for Selenka um, Evergreen Nursery, convinced my dad to try it one more year. Um, Mom and dad discussed it and decided to try it um, with a condition that if my grades declined, that would be the last time that we would do that other than maybe traveling during the summer when I wasn't in school. Uh, when we returned to Michigan in the early to mid 80s, not only did my grades not decline, they actually improved. So I met some great teachers along the, gra along the way, Frank Cry, fifth grade, Dale Conklin, sixth grade, and Christy Bruns, who to this day is one of my biggest cheerleaders, goes out canvassing with me, has um, done so much to support me personally in the campaign. Um, she would mail my assignments to Texas every time I would leave so that when I would return, I would be caught up with a class. She was my pre-calc and calc teacher. All those experiences growing up, coming from very humble beginnings and having that grassroots experience working out in the fields, picking all kinds of fruits and vegetables, um, flipping burgers and making fries at McDonald's, serving ice cream at Dairy Queen, I think have provided a well-rounded experience that provides a very different perspective for me um, than many of the other judges on the bench. I think that um, they qualify me in the sense that I'm able to identify with people of different ethnic backgrounds, different um, educational levels, different economic backgrounds. Um, I'm able to converse with ease and identify with them. And I think that's very important in a judge to be able to have the person in front of them feel like the judge is hearing them and understands their story and sympathizes and empathizes with their um, situation. Um, I went to law school while working full time at a local law firm here in Holland, Hand Persinger, um, off of Century Lane. I was working part-time at what used to be Old Kent Bank and then was bought out by Fifth Third Bank. Um, my oldest daughter was three and a half, my baby was one and a half, and I was doing law school on the weekends and on the weeknights. Um, my husband was a great support um, through all of this. So again, having that experience, being able to multitask, reading constitutional law to my kids for bedtime stories because I had to get ready for the next day for class after I worked a full day, um, I think that also brings a different kind of work ethic and a different background. Um, having worked my way up, having started as a legal secretary at the firm and then transitioning into a paralegal law clerk assistant, um, at Rhodes McKee, where ultimately I ended up working after law school, rounds out that experience. I have experience in civil law um, as well as criminal law. As a civil attorney, I did everything from meeting with clients, um, doing domestic, or not domestic, sorry, um, doing um, family law, um, business law, general civil litigation, meeting with them, preparing the pleadings, and actually arguing the cases in court. As a criminal prosecutor, I have handled thousands of cases and everything from a um, disturbing the peace misdemeanor up to and including um, armed robberies and murder cases. And I have tried many of those cases in front of juries. I haven't just touched the cases in a minor way. So my experience in front of the bench is both current and relevant. Um, I believe that I, again, offer a different perspective, something that hasn't been on the bench before. I've been very involved in my community for over 20 years long before I went to law school, long before I ever thought that I would one day um, run for office or, or run for the bench. 
I give back to my community um, and I get involved because it's my way of also paying it forward. This community came around me um, when I was growing up, uh, again, because my parents had a very basic education. They were not able to help me with homework, let alone college applications. It's the people in this community that kind of came around me, supported me, and, and helped get where I am today. So it's my way of, of paying that debt back. Um, I believe in integrity, and I think that is huge, especially in today's world. I think a lot of people throw that word around, but to me it means making the um, tough decisions and doing the right thing when nobody's looking and nobody but God will ultimately know what you did or failed to do. I believe we're all human. We all make mistakes. We've all done things that we are not proud of. People deserve a second chance. However, it's important to note when the person is ready to take um, advantage of the opportunities to turn their life around or make a change. Um, we don't have a lot of evil people in this community. Um, we have a lot of people who keep making the same mistake over and over again. My personal belief is that you can lead the horse to the water, but you can't force it to drink. So until that individual is ready to make a change, um, we, need, we have a greater responsibility to the community to keep it safe. Um, I grew up here feeling very safe and supported, and I want for others to feel the same way um, growing up here now and raising a family here now. So when somebody is ready to make a change, I think we owe it to them and we owe it to ourselves to come around them and provide the resources and provide the structure that may be necessary. If somebody is not ready to make a change for whatever the reason may be, then again, um, I think we have a greater debt to the community to keep the community uh, safe. So you will hear me say often, some defense attorneys don't like this, but I've, I've always said you need to own what you do. Nobody's expecting perfection, um, but when we do something wrong, myself included, we just need to own it and learn from it and grow from it. Um, when somebody is in a state of denial, then they're clearly not ready to, to make that um, positive change. The current issues right now is being able to process cases um, in, in this era of COVID. And you know, how do we move the cases forward? Uh, there is a huge backlog of cases. We are, again, this month not conducting jury selection because the numbers have continued to rise. The judges are doing the best they can to keep everybody safe. Um, I don't pretend to have the answers as to how best to address that. I will say that if elected, I, I'm confident that my strong work ethic will be beneficial in that regard. Um, I am committed to working hard, whether I remain at the prosecutor's office or from the bench, to try to get those cases caught up, um, maybe get creative. I don't know what options have been explored, maybe um, having different hours. I know that right now we're having arraignments five days a week as opposed to once a week, and that has helped with um, individuals coming in at different times and the, not having the courtrooms and the hallways so crowded. Um, my plan is to continue to do whatever can be done to move those cases through, but also making sure that everybody is as safe as possible in doing so. Um, the defendants, as much as the attorneys involved, the court staff, um, and everyone. Um, the other thing that I think is very important right now is being able to build trust and confidence in our judicial system. Uh, with all the problems going on locally as well as on the national level, there is a distrust of law enforcement, a distrust of the um, court system. And my hope is that I would be able to, again, offer um, some empathy from the bench, um, be able to be someone that can build that trust in the community because I've been very involved in the community. I plan to continue to do that. So I'm very aware of what the needs are, what the issues are, and I'm hoping that um, I can continue to work with a group of individuals to continue to build that trust and, and work from that. Um, I think being bilingual and being bicultural are added assets to my professional qualifications. I think um, professionally, I am qualified to do the job. Um, I'm confident that I, I can do well. Um, Judge Jonas believes that I can do well, and that's why she's endorsing me. I'm very proud of that endorsement because she has worked with both candidates and chosen to endorse me. Um, every commissioner in the county is endorsing me, our sheriff. So I, I think other people see the potential as well. And um, again, just, you know, the bilingual, bicultural are just added assets. People have asked me, is that important on the bench? And my response has been, absolutely, that is important. But I don't want people to vote for me because I'm bilingual and bicultural. Th that's just the added bonus. I think people should vote for me just based on the professional qualifications.
currently there are a number of treatment courts. There has been discussions um, about having another option, um, another kind of treatment courts for uh, maybe homeless individuals or maybe gang activities. I would be very open to that and exploring those possibilities. I understand that there are states or, um, excuse me, courts on the other side of the state who are already moving in that direction and already have some pilot programs. I'm a huge believer in our treatment courts. I have seen um, the, the benefit. There's individuals that we have um, dealt with for a number of years and once they go through the treatment courts, um, there really is a positive change in their lives. We have a um, sobriety court, a mental health court. Personally, I really would like to see a veterans court here in the county. I know that we do have a veterans court program, but um, individuals who participate in those programs has, have to either go to Allegan or to Kent County. I would like to see that more locally here in, in our own courts for our own veterans. Um, and if there is an option for a court that would address um, criminal gang behavior, then yes, I would be open to that. I think it could be very beneficial. Okay. Judicial philosophy. Um, Compassionate accountability might be the, the quickest way I can think of summarizing it. Again, um, we all need to hold ourselves accountable. Nobody's expecting perfection, but we need to um, be responsible for what we do. At the same time, we need to balance that with empathy. Um, I believe that a judge should not be seen as somebody that is um, superior to the other persons in the courtroom. The judge has a role to, um, to fill, just like the prosecutor, just like the defense attorney. Um, and I believe that it's important for there to be open communication, transparency, and the ability for the judge to um, be able to listen to both sides of an argument with an open mind, um, setting aside any um, biases. We all have implicit biases. Um, as much as I hear people say, I'm, I'm not biased, um, sometimes people don't realize they are biased because it's an implicit bias. Um, so being aware of what those biases are allows us to be able to work through them. Um, and I think that a judge should be able to recognize um, maybe I have been biased in the past in this regard and I'm willing to work towards it and just kind of have an open mind, listen to the arguments, um, be able to empathize with the person that is in front of you while at the same time being able to, to have that accountability that that's what the judge is there for with regard to the sentencing, keeping the community safe. But part of the community is also the defendant that stands before the judge. And so there's also a responsibility to that individual to serve them well. Voters who would visit my website, my Facebook page, can probably tell that I've been very involved in the community. Um, I will tell voters that I plan to continue to be as involved as I'm allowed to, um, avoiding any conflicts of interest that may be um, present with the boards that I currently serve on um, if I were to, to be elected to the bench. But I think having a judge that is involved in the community that they serve is very important. I have demonstrated that with my history. My plan is to continue to do that. Um, I think that having the respect and the endorsement of defense attorneys that I have worked with is significant. Having the endorsement from political leaders on both, from both um, main political parties is important and I think that that um, speaks loud and clear to the work that I have um, put in as an assistant prosecutor to try to be fair and unbiased and work with both sides with an open mind. Um, I think it's important for judges to be nonpartisan. My, the race is nonpartisan, but it's important to carry out the work in a nonpartisan fashion. Um, I think I have demonstrated that, and I will continue to, to do that.